Now back to the news. All these external things to try and solve what was really going on inside. Let's get to work. It wasn't until I learnt how to and started really loving myself again that I was then able to start to make rational choices. Hi, I'm Erin Deering and you're listening to The Work. So sometimes I get asked about how I find that inner confidence and how do I control my emotions? The short answer to that is that I struggled for many, many years on both accounts. I had a really, really poor, really low view of myself and it resulted in some pretty terrible habits and a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about how I used to try and buy my sanity and the moment where everything changed and also some tools that helped me deal with my triggers. All right, guys, it's story time. I'm gonna read a little bit from my book, Hanging by a Thread. So you might look at me these days and think that I'm pretty confident, and I am, but for many, many years, I did have a really unhealthy relationship with myself. So I'm gonna read you a little bit about how I struggled. I continued these same patterns to try and find just a little bit of joy, some enjoyment, but it just seemed to be moving further out of my reach. The reality was that these actions started to bring me anxiety like I'd never felt before. I'd receive packages I'd bought online and I wouldn't even want to open them. They'd build and build and when I'd finally open them, I'd unwrap a pair of $2,000 boots or a $3,000 jacket and not even take into account what I was opening. I was becoming numb to things that usually brought me some type of positive feeling. And this extended to alcohol where I would pour a glass of wine for myself after the children were asleep and sit on the couch and not even drink it. The interest wasn't there to indulge in anything that I used to look forward to. Those nights were really tough. An unfulfilled day behind me and an unfulfilled day to follow. I tried so hard to have gratitude for where I was, for how fortunate I was. I felt so trapped in my own life and I just didn't know how to get out. So that little part of that book is referring to 2018. So this is the year that I exited Triangle. So it's the year that I felt like I was gonna be free of all, and I'd separated from Craig at the end of 2017. I just felt like this year was gonna be a really good year for me, and it wasn't. The year was so, it just got worse. It got worse, and what I started doing once I'd exited Triangle, once I had all this free time and I had nothing to do, I just thought that if I just tried to externally fix my solutions, that was all I knew to do, was just to throw more money at things, buy online constantly, I went on a few trips, I'd try to drink every day, I'd take myself out for lunch and have a few drinks at lunch and then I'd come home. It was just, it was just all these external things to try and solve what was really going on inside. But at the time, I still was in complete denial that I had issues really on the inside that needed working through. External things like shopping or like drinking, in my 20s, they were pretty standard things that you did. They gave you that little dopamine hit, you know, you went shopping with a friend or you bought something and it was fun and that was it. And it was kind of that little high and that, and that little drop back, which you didn't even notice the drop back down. It was just that little high. The same with drinking. You'd go out with friends, you'd have a great time, you might have a hangover, but it was totally worth it. It was a really great time, you had a lot of fun. When I started doing these things to really, it was like an active conscious decision to try and fix something within myself with these external issues, that's when you notice that high, but it was almost like this doom around that high because you knew that the low and the drop was gonna be really big after that moment. So it got to the point that I would buy things online and it was never enough because what I was doing was I was trying to chase a feeling that did not exist anymore. So I would find something online and I would buy it and I would expect that dopamine hit to come and it didn't, so I would try it again and I would buy something else or I would go to a shop. We were living in Monaco, I was living in Monaco. So I would go to a shop, I would drop thousands of dollars on clothes. I'd walk home with these bags and I'd just be waiting to feel good. I'd be waiting for that little bit of dopamine that never ever came by that point. It didn't exist, I didn't even feel good. It was an immediate, dread feeling by this point, which I still refuse to acknowledge. So when I was really low in 2018 and I was doing this obsessively, it was because I was trying to chase those couple of minutes and they didn't even exist. They weren't even like seconds. There wasn't even a feeling. It was chasing something that simply did not exist anymore. It was like any addiction. You're chasing that high that you previously had that doesn't exist anymore. 
but your brain is just programmed to keep chasing this high. That's what it was like with me spending money at all these outside things that I used to like, you know? I used to like having a couple of glasses of wine. I used to love shopping to buy new clothes. So I, you know, cause I love my fashion and those things just stopped bringing me joy, but I still kept trying to find it. It became quite clear on, on reflection that the material things, the external things around me didn't fix my inner issues and they just distracted me from going ahead and working on them. And then further to that, on another layer on top of that, so those things are all going on. There's this, this attempt at fixing my inner issues with external solutions. When anything happened that was an inconvenience at best and a real actual proper life situation at worst, I could not handle it. My body went into complete chaos, complete shutdown. I went into total fear-based thinking, physical anxiety, you know, that, that feeling in your gut, that tingly, sickening, disgusting feeling. I used to feel it in my gut and it would, it would paralyze me in that moment. It would be panic and it would rise from my gut up into my throat, which would end up resulting in me screaming at someone, whether it was, you know, my children, a wall, anything. I would just have that external reaction. It would start from my gut and move up and out. It wasn't there to release it or make me feel better. It was there because I quite simply could not control what was going on within me as soon as anything inconvenient came my way. And all this chaos in my life was happening in complete solitude. I was totally alone, suffering in silence, not talking to anyone, not telling anyone, not doing anything to actually deal with my problems. And it was absolute torture. So coming up, I'm gonna share some tools that I used to get my mental health back on track. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys, I get asked a lot of questions about four main things, to be honest, business, self-care, motherhood, and fashion. I can't talk about these things all day, every day on Instagram, even though I do try. So I've created Love Notes, which is like having a little catch up with me in your emails. Sign up via my website, erindeering.com. It's the best way to stay connected and get those weekly little drop-ins on what's going on in my world. Now back to the podcast. All right, so I told you a little bit about how broken I was, <laughs> how, how bad things actually got. Now I wanna tell you about how much better I am at handling these sorts of things. And I'll give you a little story about something that actually happened super recently, only a couple of days ago. So I hired a new girl um, to come into my team. I hired her about six weeks ago. She had four weeks of giving notice. She started two weeks ago and on Sunday, morning, Sunday lunchtime, I got a text message from her resigning effective immediately. Don't worry, I'm not a bitch. It wasn't because I'm terrible to work for, but she resigned. And I got this, I got this text and I was in the middle of a cafe and I read it. It was quite a lengthy text. And I had, it was one of those moments, right? I had reading this text thinking, uh-huh, trying to process that. I had all my children with me. I've got one of them, but one of them tugging on my arm literally to be like, mom, mom, come outside. I want to show you this. I had two other small ones near some wine glasses that they were going to probably smash. And I just had to, in that moment, check in with what was actually going on. And basically what I remember thinking, what am I going to do right now? So what I did was put the phone back in my pocket. I had to deal with my children and be there for my children in that moment. Put my phone back in my pocket, went outside, took my kids, dealt with what I was, you know, cause what I was doing right then and there was, you know, having a morning with my children. And in that moment, I just parked what was going on and I just went and, and continued with them like nothing had happened. Controlled it, moved on. I just wanna say by the way that I did actually reply to her afterwards, just so I wasn't rude. I did, but I did it later in a calm state. <laughs> I don't wanna be like, I never wrote back. The old me would have gone into total fear-based thinking. What's gonna happen next? How am I gonna get through this? Am I gonna look bad? Does she hate me? Who am I gonna hire next? All those things, it would have gone into all that. And that would have come with fear, 
panic, frustration, annoyance, agitation, and that would have projected onto my children most likely, or my husband who was outside the cafe, rather than me being able to process and internalize at the time. Now, I was able to hold myself in a state of calm in that moment because I've worked incessantly on regulating my nervous system and being able to be calm in those moments. So I was able to see things clearly. I didn't act, I was not reactive whatsoever. I just focused on what was actually happening around me. I stayed very present. That is one of the really big keys here. I stayed really, really present and attended to my children as I knew I was doing before I got this text message. So I just moved into that with calmness and with knowing. In addition to that, I am a silver lining, glass half full kind of girl. So I immediately knew that it helps me in those situations to think of the positives and have a silver lining. So this is all happening really quickly, mind you. This is not me stepping this out for an hour. These, this whole process is happening in seconds. It's, it's truly happening in seconds. And I start thinking, instead of panicking about the what if, let's think about the what can be of this, you know? I just saved myself a pretty big salary. You know, it's really good to know now that sh that, that this girl wasn't right for the role and didn't want to stay. It could have been a lot worse if it was months down the line and we set her up for more. And just that feeling of positivity around it. Because at the end of the day, I know that I'm in control of how I feel about this and also how it will actually end up eventuating into. Something else that I really like to do in those moments is to acknowledge and to sit with the fact that how I feel and how I act isn't going to change what actually happened. Guys, I have a new book, my first book actually, and it is called Hanging by a Thread and it is out on September the 26th very soon. But if you do want to order it now, you can. You can pre-order a copy by heading to Booktopia. The link is in the show notes. So I've thrown alcohol, lavish holidays, shopping, clothes, all the material things at my issues. And I've also tried to avoid my issues altogether and nothing worked at all. It wasn't until I learnt how to and started really loving myself again that I was then able to start to make rational choices and understand what rational thinking even looked like. The big thing for me was that in my negative state, I believed that my issues were because of me and that I wasn't a good person. They were fundamentally about me in my head. Whereas now I see everything as just working around me and that I'm this rock solid thing and that everything that happens around me is not actually affecting me. So now I can think through an issue. I can pragmatically and rationally process it because I have this really strong level of self-worth and I really am in love with the person that I am. I am in love with myself and I've worked really hard to get to that state. I am very well aware that when I say I love myself and even further, I now like to say I'm in love with myself, that it sounds, it, it's jolting. It sounds cringy, to be honest. But on the flip side, What's, is it better than to hate yourself? Is it better for me to walk around going, I fucking hate myself, yeah. Like, no, that's not, I would much prefer loving myself, which means I value myself, which means I make decisions that are going to support the way I feel about myself versus the decisions that I would make if I hated myself, which we all kind of know that they're probably not gonna be the best decisions, right? So if I went out there, right, like a lot of people do, where they think that loving themselves is bad and they cringe at someone like me saying I love myself, and I went out there and I adopted the mentality of I hate myself, I hate this person, I hate this person, then what are the things that I'm going, like what am I going to do to support that feeling of hating myself? I'm gonna binge drink, you know, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna take drugs, I'm gonna live for the weekend, I'm gonna fucking hate my nine to five job, I'm gonna probably hate my partner, I'm gonna at least resent my partner, I'm probably gonna hate my partner because I hate myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna resent my kids, I'm gonna resent everything around me, I'm gonna hate my body in the sense of eat terribly, not eat enough, 
exercise too much, not exercise at all. I'm gonna stay up late and watch Netflix even though I'm not gonna get enough sleep. I'm gonna get four hours sleep, but who fucking cares? Because I hate myself. I don't value this at all. These are the kinds of decisions that we make when we hate ourselves. On the flip side, what do you think we're gonna do when we love ourselves? All right, guys, it is time to do the work. And this episode really is about doing the work. This is what this whole podcast is about, is doing some form of self-development, personal understanding who you are. That means looking into the deepest, darkest parts of your soul, which I know sounds really fucked up, but we are fucked up. So we need to kind of do that and seeing what comes of that. Now, when I mean the work and what I mean when I say the work, it is personal development work. And I know, I know you guys are listening to this thinking, ah, oh, fuck, this bit's so lame, but it's so important. The way to start, this is, this is how I did it. When I started doing the work, when I was so, so low, is I had to deal with the shit that I didn't want to deal with first. I didn't so much go and work on it straight away, but I at the very least acknowledged it. For me, it was, you know, binge drinking, cocaine, toxic relationships with people where I set myself up to be in control and I didn't trust anybody, punishing my body through exercise and through restricting food to stay a certain way of, of, of not so much physicality, but control over myself. I had to at least, at the very least, acknowledge these things about myself to then know that I could step into working on them. So the work for you guys is to actually acknowledge the things that you know are not serving you. I don't mean fluff around and deal with like the, oh, I might go and do this. Actually front, like face them head on, write them down, tell them to yourself. You might not even need to write them down, talk to yourself about them. Start having that conversation with yourself about these things that you feel so fucking shameful about that are actually the same things that we're all dealing with. I'm telling you, no one is more screwed up than anyone else. We are all the same. Start talking to yourself about it in a way where you know you're eventually going to go and do the work on it. Thanks to you guys for tuning into this one. Uh, this one's really close to my heart and I would love to hear any of your feedback on it. So please let me know. Now the work is split into two episodes a week, business on Monday, personal on Thursday. So get around them. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, did you know that you can also watch me on Spotify and YouTube? And if you are watching me, thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Mwah. Bye.